Voice acting can feel like a lonely and isolated career, especially with fewer in-studio sessions and more quote-unquote human interaction happening via Zoom. So that does, of course, have its advantages, but disadvantages as well. So recently I asked a question in the VoiceOver Marketing Playbook private Facebook group about in-person networking, and the stories that were shared were pretty inspiring. My guest today has had more than a few wins from her in-person networking experiences, and I wanted to bring her on the show so we could be inspired and learn from them. Her clients include Fairmont Hotels, Microsoft, and Stanford Medicine. Welcome to the show, Haley Porter. Hi, Mark. So we're going to talk in-person networking because, and I think this is one of the most important things about this, I have a reputation as being known as the email guy, right? I, I teach email and social media as well. But I, I always say there's no one right way to do marketing. And there are so many different avenues that you can explore that fall into alignment with your strengths, your personality, your skill set, whatever. And I think in person is one of those things that is often overlooked. Yeah, we go to voiceover conferences, but there's only so much actual business networking that you're going to do at voiceover conferences. So I'm excited to hear about your, your stories and your experiences. So you joined the Chamber of Commerce last year. What made you decide to sign up? So I have been a small business person for a very long time. And I was a member of the chamber years ago when I owned a retail clothing store. Uh, in tandem to that, my husband ran a flower shop for about 35 years. It was an extension of his family's greenhouse. So there's a lot of small business in the blood here okay. in our household. Uh, so I'd, I'd been a member before. But it had been a very, very long time. And I think to take a little responsibility for myself here, I viewed what I was doing as a voice actor in my space, in my home, working from a home business, reaching out beyond my borders uh, to the big clients. I was really negating the opportunity in my own backyard. And I, mm -hmm. I just sort of had the realization uh, last year when my daughter, who is a professional influencer, and I will add that's a real job, by the way, it's a real job. And uh, she started to be contacted by many local businesses uh, who have no idea how to do social media. I mean, we face that all the time, too, even as voice actors, right? Sure. So these are small businesses that, A, don't have the time to do it. B, have no idea how to do it, are technology unsavvy, they're reaching out to a 21-year-old, you know, saying, please help us. We, we know we need to be in this space. Yep. And it got me thinking about the fact that what we do is so unique, and people don't even know I'm here, really, in my own backyard, unless I get out there and physically meet them. And so it was kind of a no-brainer that the Chamber was a really good place to start and make the commitment not only to be a member, but to be an active member. And what's kind of funny, you might laugh about this, but as soon as I joined, they asked me to be on the board. <laughs> I was like, Look okay, wait a minute. <laughs> Already is... moving into upper management. <laughs> I know. It's like, well, at least run. They, they were having an election. so. But I thought, you know, that's maybe a little too much too soon. But I, I have sat on different boards in the past with my other businesses. So there was, a, you know, a little connection there. Um, but what I found, I, I, I wasn't able to attend uh, events right away. I joined in about October, November. And it was the Christmas season. I was still, you know, having a busy year in the studio, but I, I knew January was coming and that things are a little quieter in the voiceover world, but that's yep. an opportunity to build the things that you just don't have time for when you're so busy doing your job. So I immediately signed up. I literally, Mark, okay, I'm in Western Canada here. I drove through a snowstorm to get to the first event on a, a 7 a.m. Well, drinking a Tim Hortons coffee and eating some maple syrup on your bagel. Oh, yeah. You know, and no joke. It, the first event was at a donut place, not Tim Hortons. Of course it was. But it was. Of course it was. Yeah. And and thank goodness it was because uh, I was not the only person to drive through that snowstorm that day. And I had such beautiful, rich 
uh, conversations with people that, A, I hadn't seen in a little while. Thank you, pandemic. Uh, B, I had no idea what they were up to. They had no idea what I was up to. And we ended up staying at least an hour past the time, you know, just having these wonderful conversations, getting to know what everyone was up to. So so building on that, I, I thought, I'm just going to keep coming to these and showing showing up. And it's different people every time. Yep. And so that another rich resource of, of opportunity sitting right there waiting for you. Um, and I'm the timing of your podcast today and this interview is so perfect because last night I came out of a gala that the chamber put on. Uh, soon after I joined, they announced that they were doing a rebrand of the chamber. Uh, new logo, new colors, new everything. And they were in production of a promo video. When they heard I was a voice actor, they reached out right away. Um, I was connected then with uh, an ad agency that I had never worked for. So I now have that connection. Um, they're not based where I am. They're a little ways away in a, in a more major center. So that was great. Uh, and I voiced this promo video for them, which they awesome. launched last night. And so I was in a room of 200 people listening to me on this video. That's and so that cool. was really exciting. And, and, and so there were so many things that ran through my mind. A, I'm contributing to my community, which I really, really like. And yep. I'm getting in front of other voice, uh, pardon me, uh, business people. Um, so there was, there was a sense of pride in that, which is hard to explain. It's just something you have to experience. Uh, but I also got to experience my work in real time, in real life and seeing reactions and listening to people, you know, talk about it afterwards. And some people knew that it was me. Other people couldn't believe it was me, you know, people that knew me. Uh, and then there was a, a third group of people who were like, voice acting, what's that? And, you know, oh, yeah, you know, do you do you do you create film in your business? Do you do social media? What are you doing? You know, it, it opened up a conversation. That, that was, was the one that I was fantastic. fully expecting, because it's not like you're walking around the chamber and you're like, I sell used cars. Oh, great. Nobody wants to have a conversation with you, right? I'm a voice actor. What? You're a what? What's a voice? And everybody wants to stop and have a conversation with you. Something else that you said that I think is really important to rem uh, recognize as well is missing out on opportunities that exist right in your own backyard because so often we look out there we we you know whatever that is it's always the next big city or the next big state or the next big province or we're we're looking out there and we're not even realizing that look we've got car dealers that do automotive we've got office buildings that have IVR we've got you know maybe mid-sized companies that might be doing some e-learning we've got uh, retail and service providers that are maybe creating social media videos and those can exist right in the community, but we miss out on, on looking for those. And the other thing I was thinking about too, you know, you, you mentioned about having this opportunity to, to voice this promo. If you go to a chamber of commerce meeting, there's, you know, you're, you're going to be surrounded by other small business owners. It's, it's inevitable that a percentage of them are going to be, you know, service providers, a percentage of them are going to be car dealers, a percentage of them are going to be retail, but I'm going to guess more often than not, you're going to be the only voice actor in the room. Oh, completely. Yes, absolutely. And there's some explaining behind that too. Like everybody automatically thinks you do radio commercials and yes, I do that. But uh, I have a lot of other skills that uh, might benefit you that you haven't thought about. So, look, everybody's – we know this as voice actors, too. We need to brand ourselves. Branding is very important. These small businesses, they're no dummies. They know that, too. They know yep. that their brand is very important. So that is a, an opportunity as a voice actor to be a part of that. So here's – would you like to hear phase two? This is my phase one plan. Okay, yes, let's do it. <laughs> All right. Phase two – is uh this is where i insert the pinky in the brain <laughs> clip of the brain saying i'm going to take over the universe or whatever <laughs> Sorry, it is <laughs> my evil plan uh is i need to really be more cognizant and aware of the parallel providers in my area so videographers yeah. uh people in radio why not um, yep. I met some people last night that have a podcast that's doing really, really well. You know, there's potential to be on, on that podcast. You never know what 
is going to come of that. You just yep. can't see it. it. The reach is just too broad these days. So uh, that my, my, my second phase plan is to really get connected with some of these people so that when they have projects that come in that require a voice, uh, they will have me top of mind. Thinking of you. Exactly. And, you know, I think sometimes we think small business and we think small dollars. That's yep. not always the case at all. I mean, the chamber paid me. Uh, I gave them a small break because I get a little break through them as a chamber member. You know, I, so I yep. tried to extend that yep. to them as well. Sure. Kind of a friends and family rate, if you of will. Of course. Yep. Um, and, and I always keep in mind, too, I've, I've been a small business person and we probably... We had a, you know, a, a retail facing business. I probably had at least three times a week someone walking through those doors trying to sell me something. And it was usually in the realm of advertising. Um, this is pre-social media. This is, pre yeah. <laughs> I hate to say this, this is pre-internet really. So this is <laughs> back in the 90s. But, uh, you know, the point of it is, is that businesses do need to advertise. And there are many ways they can do that. But let's face it, everything is video and audio yep. right now. So if true. You don't, yeah, and they, they know that. They're beginning to realize that, too. So they're willing to pay going rates. I mean, you might have to soften up a little bit here and there, work with someone's budget. I mean, you know what? Here's the nice thing, Mark, is that I can have a face-to-face -face conversation. I can get in my car and go drive down and walk right into their business and see what it is that they're doing. They appreciate that. They really appreciate that. So I... It's not just a job. It's like, I understand your, your community. I understand, hey, I might be one of those people that wants your product or service. So there's a relationship building that happens uh, very, very quickly. And, and, and it's, it's kind of like deep appreciation. There's, yep. there's some kind of exchange that is so completely different from dealing with casting agents, P2Ps, all the regular ways that we look for work, email even, um, that's just far more personal. And I think in the long run is going to be a compliment to my business. Will it be the largest part of my business? Probably not, but it's going to be a really fun aspect of my business. I don't know about you. I get a little bit tired of just being alone all the time in, you know, padded walls. <laughs> I think that's a big room. part of it, though, is 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 it's not – you can't just go in – well, I mean, you shouldn't just go in looking for – specifically and strictly looking for just I need voiceover work, and I'm only going to talk to the people that can give me voiceover work. You have no idea how these relationships that you build are going to impact your life down the road. You're doing a home renovation – and, you know, your electrical panel malfunctions, but you happen to have a really amazing relationship now with the local electrician who you met through a chamber event and had back and forth conversations with or whatever it is like there's you're building relationships that have uh, ripple effects far beyond just getting voiceover. I think you need to to think about that as well. And, you know, to your point of working with somebody local, when I w did the original Vopreneur logo, I used an online design service for it. And, and I don't have any complaints with that online design service. They provided the service that I was looking for. You know, they met all the expectations, but I'm going through a rebrand of, of Vopreneur right now. And this time around, it just so happened that a local graphic designer started popping up for whatever reason, thank the algorithm, I guess, but just started popping up in my Instagram feed. And I was following along with some of the, the logos that she'd been working on for local businesses and was really liking some of the stuff that she did. And so I thought, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to call her and, and see what, you know, see if we can do something here. And to be able to have those conversations as opposed to just typing out messages in a chat box or, you know, back and forth, like Slack channel style conversation, like an actual human conversation with a human being, somebody that, that you can connect with on that level locally, uh, what a total, totally different experience uh, in, in just going through that process. And so I a hundred percent think that it, it is an area where we overlook and there are so many more advantages to it than just finding the work. Although you have found some work. So you talked a little Definitely. bit about the gala. Uh, tell us a little bit about, there's a documentary project, I believe that you yes. said was, uh, was in the works. If you, you know, if you're not under an NDA or something, uh, you know, tell us about some of the not other yet. ones that you've had. Yeah. So uh, the promo video was the first thing. The second thing that came out of it, it simply a conversation. Nothing's in writing yet. But a young filmmaker that was uh, at a, a different event that I was at through the chamber 
approached me. He he w- could not believe there was a voice actor in his community. He thought he would have to reach out uh, beyond our borders here. Sure. And uh, he said, look, there is uh, an organization in our city. Uh, they're called Aspire. And, and what they do is they work with children. They have quite a history, too, of, of great success of working with children with developmental disabilities. And I've actually worked with that company a little bit in the past. Uh, I'm a, I come from a singing background and I have a band and we've been hired for some of their events, some of their fundraisers. So I, I was very, very familiar with it. So it was nice to be able to speak intelligently to him and say, yes, right. I know this organization. I've worked with them before. What they're doing is amazing. I would love to be on that project. He said, great. We exchanged information. He said, we're just in the early stages right now, and I'll be in touch with you. And so, I mean, there are things happening that we're not even really aware of, you know, in our own community. We get in such, you know, such blinders on about, you know, again, trying to reach out beyond our borders. Yep. Um, so the other thing I was going to say to Mark is that, you know, I, I'm, I'm talking a lot about the chamber here and some of the wins. Um, I also plan on IVR and on hold phone systems, reaching out to people that way. That's a kind of an, an easy no brainer one. Yep. Um, but I also was hoping to talk to you a little bit about conferences outside of the typical voiceover conferences. That now, was, to be fair. <laughs> that was one of my questions. I, was like, I wanted you to talk about the experience that you recently had with your daughter and the, and the conference yeah. that you went to, because that's all part of it. That, that's all part of in-person networking. There's one thing I wanted to touch on, though. You, you, you made a statement when you were talking to this documentary producer that he didn't even realize that there was a voice actor in his community. Do you right. know how many videographers, video producers, production companies in towns across North America, whatever, Europe, wherever, are probably thinking that exact same thing. Yes. Because we're we're not trying to find them because we're, again, we're always looking out there. That's a statement that is a total reminder. I mean, that should be a, a, a reality check for every one of us that make sure that you're reaching out in your own community and finding out who these people are in your own community, especially when you're in smaller places. Yeah. If you're in Chicago, you're not the only voice actor in Chicago, but where I am, I know I'm the only voice actor. I've had that conversation with local producers before. And so that just gives me a leg up right out of the gate. So uh, that was a really, really interesting statement that you made and, and something that we all need to take in mind that we can all do a little bit better job of uh, working on our marketing at a local level, but yes, tell us about Absolutely. the tell us about your recent conference experience with your daughter because that was uh, that was a fun story too. I've I've got to hear this before, but I'm looking forward to hearing it again. Sure, sure. So uh, to be fair, I have never attended a voiceover conference, and it's just been logistics at this yep. point. Uh, it, there's been a conflicting event, a wedding. Uh, whatever. There's been different reasons why I have not been able to attend, but, uh, an opportunity arose. So my, my daughter is a professional influencer. She just happens to be, uh, associated friends with Mr. Beast. And that came out of an experience that she had. She was cast in a YouTube original production. Again, local filmmakers who were doing this amazing thing on YouTube. YouTube picked them up and they put together a show basically and so uh they used a local person happened to be my daughter uh there was an agent from la involved uh they flew to florida they filmed and came back there's a long story behind all of that too because there was a flood involved and they lost all the footage (laughs) so i won't go into all of that but because this agent was involved she had access to vid summit uh, this is a, I think this is back in 2021. So it was still pandemic time. And so my daughter, Tori, uh, was able to go and attend Vid Summit, which is owned by Mr. Beast. And this is a conference for professional YouTubers. Okay. Okay. So um, she was very excited to go. I didn't know who this guy was at all. I, it's my age. Like I, I didn't know who Jimmy Don't was. Don't feel bad. <laughs> Until I started working with Hunter Peterson, I wasn't really familiar yes. either. So, <laughs> exactly. This is why we have children. They That's keep right. us up with all these things. <laughs> 
So anyways, she goes to the conference. It was quite small because it was the pandemic. So Mr. Beast is basically just milling about in this group of, you know, maybe a few hundred people. There was great access to him. Um, here's where your skill stack comes in, okay? If you've got skills in other areas, good golly, it can be such a great connector. My daughter is an excellent poker player, and Mr. Beast loves poker. So you can imagine how I felt when I got a phone call. <laughs> from my 19-year-old daughter saying, and she's in Mom, LA. Mom, a million bucks in the hold of Mr. <laughs> Beast in a game of poker. I need you to come bail me out. <laughs> even worse, even worse it was. It, it's about midnight. Hi, Mom, I'm in a hotel room with Mr. Beast playing poker. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. I, I felt very confident in, in my daughter's uh, upbringing, her value when system. When you don't know <laughs> who ethics. Mr. Beast is, by the way, and your your 20-year-old daughter calls you and says, I'm in a hotel room with a guy named Mr. Beast, like, <laughs> your Playing mind poker. is not going to good places initially. No. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but she can hold her own in poker. And the whole room was cleared out. It was just set up with tables, things like that, uh, for them to play poker. But they got along really, really well. So a few years go by. Uh, she gets invited back to Vid Summit. like, you should really come down. At this point, she has now built up her business. And she receives a, a sponsorship from a local Cadillac dealership to drive all the way from central Alberta, Western Canada, to Dallas, Texas. So uh, this is going to be Canadian speak here for a moment. We put 8,000 kilometers onto that vehicle. <laughs> Quick, somebody asked Siri to do the conversion. <laughs> I know, <laughs> exactly. And uh, I thought if I'm, uh, and of course, I went with her to help her drive and my son attended as well. I thought, if I'm going all this way, I, there's no way that I am not going to attend this conference. So sure. I was able to get a ticket as well, even though I am not a YouTuber. But my eyes were so opened by this particular event. There was about a, a thousand, eight hundred, I think it was about 800 attendees there. And the list of people that were presenting, Tom Bilyeu, I don't know if you follow Tom at all. He's a... He's quite, got quite a YouTube presence. He's a bit of a motivational speaker now. He created a energy bar company and has done really, really well. Um, I went to a, a presentation by the creator and founder of Speechify okay. and had an opportunity to directly ask him questions about AI and voice during that, or just following the presentation. It was an amazingly golden opportunity. Uh, so, so that was incredible. Then I heard stories of creators who are doing extremely well on YouTube. And these are average people, Mark, uh, in mm. many cases. They're just really, they pay attention. That's really yep. all it is. They're, they're savvy in the way that they're paying attention to the comments, what people want. Uh, just as an example, there was a lady there who, had, she was a mother of eight, she started a cooking channel uh, just as the, the pandemic was beginning, and it was on frugal recipes for families. She noticed that people really were, she was getting higher view counts on her air fryer recipes because everybody brought an air fryer, yep. fryer during the Sourdough pandemic. Sourdough bread and air fryers. That's exactly. going to be how history will remember 2020. <laughs> exactly. And so she just doubled down and started making more air fryer recipes. Uh, videos. And then people in the comments started asking, you know, it'd be really nice if we could print off that recipe and have it, you know, like as a little printout. So she said, everything that I did, I always started off by saying, I don't know how to do that, but I'll figure it out. And I loved that. I'm like, that's yep. going to be my new moniker. I don't know how to yep. do that, but I'm going to figure that out. And so, courtesy of YouTube. Now we can, by the way, exactly. <laughs> Somebody's exactly. made a video on how to do that thing. Yes. There's, there's definitely a video about it. Yep. I, I forget the exact number, but I think she said she made $260,000 in about wow. six weeks with a little landing page where, you know, for a dollar, a microtransaction, you yep. could download this, this recipe. So, so my mind was blown wide open at this event mm -hmm. at, first of all, the amount of content creation going on out there. It, yep is vast and way bigger than I ever even realized. Um, the technology side of it, that was very interesting to me. Um, 
There were things that I didn't know about podcasting that I learned about, just what you're doing here with Riverside FM. Um, there are companies that specialize in just reading the comments so that you can gather data. It's basically data collection. Yep. So, I mean, these are strategies that large companies incorporate that as a small business owner, you can learn about and incorporate as well. So, it's so true. Yeah. So I, I met a lot of videographers, filmmakers, things like that. I have not realized any uh, work out of that yet, but I, I think the value for me in that particular one was really just on the educational side and really opening up my own viewpoint as well. I, I live in a, a city of 100,000 people situated, you know, it's a little bit like Yellowstone out here. <laughs> it's all, you know, agriculture, oil and gas, prairie life. And uh, you can have the blinders on a little bit for that too. And reaching out to these kinds of content creators that I don't really usually think about just has me paying a much different kind of attention. How, how often do you use YouTube in a day? Not as often as I should, but I will tell you that it is absolutely a go-to resource for me when I'm, you know, like, so I've been doing a lot of video editing and I've been learning Adobe Premiere. I always used to be a Final Cut Pro guy. And every time that I am trying to figure out how to do something new in Adobe Premiere that I don't know how to do, the very first thing I do is go and search it up in YouTube. And every single time there's a video that shows me exactly how to do it. And that's, I mean, that's the beauty of YouTube. Yeah. I've actually started watching more podcasts on YouTube as well. I mean, I love to listen to them when I'm out for a walk or when I'm in the car or whatever, but sometimes I just flip them on while I'm sitting in the office and just working away during the day or something like that. But, you know, something that you said that I think is really important to highlight is the educational component of this, you don't, the, the, the success for me, the return on investment success doesn't specifically come from, I attended this conference and I, you know, booked this many voiceovers. Right. It can also be, I attended this conference. I learned how to do this thing. I implemented that thing into my business, or I, imp I, I implemented something that I learned so that I can do something I was already doing better in my business. And what is the return on investment down the road? For example, when you start working on content strategy and now you're doing your content so much better because of something that you've learned. I mean, one of the lessons that you, you touched on it, you know, companies that just read comments, I could tell you right now that the vast majority of my podcasts, YouTube content, social media content in general is directly driven from the comments of the Vopreneur Facebook group. That's why that group exists. Yes, it gives me a channel to communicate with people. It gives me a channel to, to be able to help people, but it also gives me insights into what are people struggling with? Because if this is a struggle in their business, okay, well, I can find somebody to bring on the podcast to talk about that subject, or I could get a guest that could answer questions about that, put them on free advice Friday, or I could make a, a course to dive deeper into that, or I can create a PDF handout that would help with that. And so, I mean, those, those types of strategies can, can be a huge difference. But I, sometimes I think that's one of the areas where we're missing opportunities is because look, I love VO Atlanta. I want to be at VO Atlanta every year. I get excited about it. I've already got it marked off on my calendar for next year, but sometimes we got to get out of the bubble, you know, go to that video producer conference, go to that audiobook conference, go to that e-learning conference, the, the documentary conference, whatever it is, just to hear, maybe you're going to find some new clients, maybe you're not, but you're going to hear some different perspectives. You're going to learn some, some different things. You're going to meet some different people that you don't know how those relationships may ultimately influence your business down the road. But it's always nice to be able to have some, my favorite thing is referring people, right? Mm. When, when somebody comes to me and I can't help them with whatever it is, I want to be able to have a database where I can go and say, okay, you know what? I can't do this, but let me connect you to that person. Absolutely. Yeah. That comes from your network. Right. Yeah, it it comes from the network that you build for yourself. It hey, this is a really stupid question, but I have to ask it. Sure. Because I'm very curious about it. Um, we obsess over business cards. And and still to this day, the very first thing that a voice actor wants to do when they, you know, plant their flag in voiceover is is get their their business card uh designed and 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 built. As you go to these different events, these different conferences, different in-person networking, I'm curious, are people still using traditional business cards or have we adopted the digital business card now, which is becoming more and more of a, of a trend. It's a stupid question, but I'm just very curious what your insight is. Have you, have you noticed one way or the other? Yes. I have a stack 
of paper business cards sitting on my desk right now. <laughs> <laughs> All but, waiting for you patiently to, to patiently waiting for you to put them into your CRM, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Or send out LinkedIn connections and things like that. But I use the digital mobile okay. card. Now I have found people are putting um, VPNs onto their phone, and yep. it's not working as well. And they're always very impressed when I pull it out and you know hold it up to their phone, and everything goes right into their contacts. Everything's right there. But I also kind of wonder if maybe the paper is – I'm, I'm thinking I might get both, to be honest. I always wondered if there would be a hesitancy. If a complete stranger comes up to me that I you know, met at a conference – I'm at Vid Summit, and there's all these YouTubers around, whatever. Complete stranger comes up to me and says, here, let me give you my card, and they hold out their phone, and they want to beam me something. Maybe it's just because I'm an old fart, but there's a part of me that's like, how do I know that this guy is not about to beam something into my phone that is about to – infect it or steal all my data from it or right. now amazon ads are going to follow me around even more on the internet than they already do or whatever so there's always been this this little bit of a hesitancy but it's an interesting trend this whole digital business card thing has been an interesting trend i've been following along with and, I, and people do ask the question so i'm yeah. just always curious from people who are out there doing the in-person networking thing regularly if you're if you're seeing one or or the other but it sounds like still very much that yeah. the business cards are the digital business cards are still more of a novelty item, but people are still doing it old school. Even at Vid Summit, uh, it was more paper business cards, which surprised me. I walked in there with my little fancy digital business card, <laughs> and all to... the twenty-year-old YouTubers are like, "What is that?" Yeah, exactly. Now you're the now you're the cool mom in the building, though, right? That gives you street cred immediately. <laughs> that's that's right. And I did meet one guy. He actually had a really good idea. He uh, he had me hold up my business card, and we took a picture together. So I did tap his phone, and it went into yep. his phone. But he's like, "I can't, I won't be able to find you again, because I don't won't remember your name." But right. he goes through all his photos at the end of the conference, and people are holding up their business cards. And he's like, "If I see your face and the card, yeah, and then I remember like what session we That's were in really together, smart. what we did." I was like. That's actually a really good idea. That is a really good idea. Yeah, like maybe you could use it in a social media post or something like that. Yeah. I have to tell you something funny, though. I have a friend who's a computer scientist, and, you know, I've, I always worry a little bit about that, too, that, hey, you're loading something into my phone that I don't want. He's like, you know, there is nothing preventing anybody from putting a QR code on a table in a mall <laughs> where... You just think it's the menu or it's some information yep. about something so that I need. And it's so malicious true. malware. It's, you know, terrible, terrible to think that way. But we have to be kind of But it is. It, it is how we think now. Yeah. But, you know, I'll tell you something about business cards, too, because um, not specifically about business cards, but the type of person who all they do is just hand out business cards. OK, so I was thinking a little bit about meeting with you today. And I thought I am no expert at networking. Like, I don't claim to be some networking queen, but. I'm a people person, okay? Yep. And so the other opportunity that we have when we're in-person networking is to have conversations. And how many times do you see be conversational like you and I are being right now uh, yep. in, in specs? We see it all the time. So it's a way to practice. 100%. But here's the other thing. I love studying psychology and archetypes. And I started thinking last night when I was at this event, I'm going to just kind of pay attention to the type of networking archetypes that are out there because, Mark, there are archetypes in networking. Yes, so I did are. a little Googling around this morning, and sure enough, so I came up. So you have to hear this because it's so brilliant. This was from uh, a site called Young Upstarts. Okay? Okay. okay. All right. So the first one they had, this is so good, was the wallflower. They stand around the edge and avoid talking. Yep. <laughs> I've seen those people. I'm not okay. going to say that I self-identify, but. <laughs> if, you know, sometimes we would just prefer that, right? For whatever reason. So number two is the escapist, always on the phone or texting to avoid conversations. I met somebody like that last night. So it's like, take, take the cue, Haley. Take the cue. Move on. Uh, number three was the gossiper. Uh, they spread stories about others in the industry to create conversation. I thought, oh. Oh, yeah, I can there's, think there's a few of those like around. Yep, yep. Okay. Then there was the gourmand. Uh, this is the person that heads straight to the buffet table and stays there the whole night to avoid conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so true. So, so true. There's always the buffet if you, you know. 
have trouble mixing it up. Okay, number five was the salesman. Here's the business card. Uh, yep. This is the person that walks the room and hands out business cards to everyone in sight. So they're yep. not being selective at yep. all. So it kind of has no value, right? Yep. Number six, second last one, is the rambler. Uh, talks a lot and holds you hostage. Okay, I could be totally... I've definitely encountered a few <laughs> of those in the past. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and even myself, I mean, we talk for a living, right? So uh, I have to dance around that one a little Well, bit. and especially when you're trapped in your booth all day, you finally get to be out amongst the people. You know, if you're an extrovert, yes. this is like your heaven. You want to be out there and, and you want to just be talking to everybody. So I get That's that. That's right. That's right. And here's the last one. This is the one you want to shoot for is the pro. Okay. The pro circulates the room with confidence and class, hands out business cards to a select few strikes up engaging conversations and shares valuable information with others. So that's who we have to strive to be in the archetypal world of networking is the pro. This brings up a really good opportunity then, because I, I, you said, I'm not an expert at this. I, I, I don't bring people on specifically because they're experts. I bring people on because they're doing it. And I just want to hear what your experiences are while you're doing it. So keeping in mind these archetypes and, and whatnot, Talk to us a little bit about your strategy when you go to these things. I'm assuming you're not just walking up to everybody saying, hi, I'm a voice actor with your handout with a business card or whatever. So for somebody who doesn't do this a lot, or maybe they've been thinking, you know, I really should go to one of these events or something like what are some things that we could take in mind to, to make the experience a little bit better for ourselves and, and, and be a little bit more comfortable while we're there mingling around. This is my favorite question so far. Because I do have a strategy, and it Good. is an extension of what I have learned as a performer, okay? So I come from a music background. I've taught voice in the past, voice lessons for, for singers. And one of the key things that I would always teach my students is to pre-pave, okay? So when you get up on a stage and you have a captive audience looking at you, just waiting for you to perform. It's a terrifying moment, <laughs> A. <laughs> B, if you've done your prep work, you can relax a little bit, right? You've done the work. Yep. Your voice is ready. You know the music. You know what's about to happen. You, well, you should have practiced. Um, but there's, there's an additional thing that you can do. You can pre-pave. And it sounds a little woo-woo, but it really isn't, is I just take a few moments to just imagine how I want to feel when I am in that situation. Right. So I, it's sort of like setting your tone, setting your state of being, if you will. Mm -hmm. So before I walk into a room, here's what I'm thinking. What is it of value that I have to offer anybody standing in there? And I just make a little checklist. Then and you might laugh at this, I think, I'm going to go in there and save people. Now, that sounds a little, <laughs> a little extreme. but From the one that, from the, what was the one, the archetype that holds you hostage? I'm going to go with my strategy <laughs> is to be the archetype that saves people that are being held hostage. That's right. That's right. I have to be very careful to not be the devouring mother, but uh, a little, yeah, Jungian. But anyways, um, or Freudian, I guess that's Freudian. Anyways, uh, if you're a wallflower and I walk in and I say, hey, my name's Haley. Nice to meet you. What brings you here? Yep. You, and I just saved them. I just saved them because they're sitting on that outer rim of the room terrified. So yep. most of these archetypes are people that either don't know how to have a conversation, have a really hard time networking. They, they, just, they just have to be there sometimes, whether it's something to do with their business or a company, uh, or they're just hoping that they'll have a conversation with somebody. You're literally saving them by walking up, shaking their hand, introducing yourself. And then the next step is to find some common ground. Like mm -hmm. every, there, there's, first of all, you're bo probably both small business people. If it's at a chamber event, for example, yep. um, or you both have a similar reason for being at this event or space at the same time, you have some reason for being there. And so, but there's other things too. You can talk about kids. You can talk about a school in the community. You can talk about a recent news event. You can talk, there's so many, th the food that you're eating. Wow, this is so great. I didn't know I was going to have Guinness cake tonight. You know, this is what we talked about last night. It was amazing. 
uh, there's a lot of points of commonality that have nothing yep. to do with selling. It's sure. just to have a conversation, to relax, to just meet people and get to know them. Here's the other thing. People love talking about themselves. I mean, that's everybody's the way. favorite subject. Yes. And I had a situation last night where I met somebody who was a very strong personality and I could see him looking over my shoulder behind me as I'm talking. And I'm like, you know, read the room. Like, I'm being boring right now. So I wrapped it up, you know, and just said, you know, it was awesome to meet you. I'm going to let you mix mix around a little bit. I'm going to go meet some other people, too. Just as simple as that. And, and attention uh, to the cues, right? Exactly. Exactly. It's very, very simple things that you can do. But I really love the idea of pre-paving before I even get there. So it's not such a shock to the system. You've kind of set yourself. You're ready to roll. So let's talk about after the event. What kind of follow-up strategies do you have or, or do you have? Like you said, you've got a, a stack of business cards. I'm assuming this is from the gala last night. So what, what do you do when you get home from the event in the next day or the next couple of days afterwards? Are you yep. adding cards to CRMs? Are you sending LinkedIn connections? Like what, what's your strategy there? Precisely. Yeah. LinkedIn number one. Uh, but that depends on how active they are on LinkedIn too. Mm -hmm. uh, if they're not that uh, active, then I, I turn to email right away. But it can be a combination of both because, you know, I, I may want to share something with them. Uh, obviously, this new promo video, I can't wait to, sh even though they were there, you know, like, it was so great to meet you. you know, here's the promo video. If you want to pass it on to anybody in the community, here's the link to it because they may not take that step to do it. Anything that will engage them in conversation, just remind right. them uh, who I am. And, uh, you know, even popping into their business and reintroducing myself and say, hey, I just wanted to see what it is that you, you guys have a gin distillery. That's amazing. Why? Why did you want to do that? Just be curious a little bit about having that small business attitude really, really helps. I've, I've been on that side of it where all your blood, sweat and tears goes into creating, uh, you know, in our, in our case, it was retail spaces. Uh, I understand their point of view and where they're coming from. And so it's just uh, another, another factor is appreciation. You know, thanks for that conversation we had last night. I really enjoyed learning about your company and your business and what you guys are doing. Um, that can, that can be as simple as that. A thank you. Yeah, that's what I do. I love the idea of popping in. When you're dropping into somebody's inbox or even their LinkedIn at this point, generally speaking, it's where you're going to find the most competition. That is to say, you know, everybody gets 100 emails a day or 500 emails a day or whatever, and, and it can be a little bit harder to stand out there. But when you have the opportunity to meet these people in person, but then, you know, later on that week, if you're in town and you're, you know, walking into their business or dropping in or something like that, what a great way to stand out beyond the inbox. Not to say that you can't use email and socials as part of that strategy. Of course you can, but where else and when else do you get the opportunity to just walk in and see them face to face again and, you know, get that, give them that reminder of who you are or whatever. So I really, I really like that. Well, I realize that they are doing the exact same thing that we're trying to do. They're trying to run a business, to feed their families, to make their way through life. And uh, I appreciate that so much. And it's so that takes you out of the sales mode yep. to a degree. I want to provide value. I want to know how can I help you? I have a skill that that may be really beneficial to your to your aspirations as as a business. How can I help you? It's it's kind of having the right attitude. Yeah. But don't be afraid to to reach. I mean, I, I, I call myself an extroverted introvert. I'm quite happy to hide under the covers with a good book or something like that for an entire weekend. But it's it's important that we that we do have these in person communicative opportunities and people are actually starving for that. I heard a comment yeah. last night from a a person that I knew that was at this event who said, you know, I feel like my social skills have really depleted thanks to the pandemic. <laughs> That's pretty bad for a guy like me because I had like I don't know, zero social skills pre-pandemic. And now I feel like I'm in negative territory at this point as, a, as, a, as an introvert who already struggles with this stuff to begin with. So 
that is totally yeah. relatable. I can get that. You walk in and sometimes you don't always know what to say. Yeah. And and for the most part, I find people are just really hungry for yeah. the, the human connection. Um, I, and you and I have had these conversations, Mark, and I'll, I'll make the statement here just for fun. I find it so weird that AI is rising at a time when people want authenticity. <laughs> You know, like, how often do you see authenticity Seems in a Seems to be a spec? conflict there. It's like, why are these two things happening at the same time? Yeah. I have no idea. But but uh, we even had some AI conversations. Uh, I was speaking to a lawyer. Uh, she's a, a QC, which in Canada is a Court of Queen's Bench. Well, maybe it's King now. Maybe it's Casey. I don't know. Uh, but anyways, she's a very uh, accomplished lawyer. And she expressed to me her concerns about about AI taking yep. over a large part of the business that they do. Yep. And uh, it was really interesting to be able to have a conversation with her as a voice actor and say, yeah, I get you. And here's what I'm looking into. And here's what I'm seeing. And here's some of the research I'm coming up with. And we were able to kind of meet on this really, you know, fringe topic that was fantastic. I'm sure that we'll continue that conversation. I think you just answered my final question because the, the the one thing I wanted to talk about was, you know, obviously when you go to these events and, and for any of us, we go to these events, our intent is, you know, let's connect with some people and hopefully create some voiceover opportunities for ourselves, right? That's why, that's why we do this. That's why every business goes there, you know, they're looking for a new client or, or whatever. Um, but my question was going to be, apart from that, what else have you got? from these events and it sounds like part of it is in, at least anyway is just some of these relationships that you're starting to build that you know maybe they have something to do with voiceover one day but maybe they don't but there's still value just because of the relationships that you're building the people that you're connecting with so i'm i'm assuming that is there is there anything else that you're like this has been another thing that i got from these events that i hadn't anticipated or didn't think about so I would categorize it a few different ways. One, I've gotten some work out of it. Absolutely. Yep. I would say I also have future work out of it. That's just the way that I kind of look at things. I know that marketing is a long game. Planting and seeds. Right? Yes, yes, exactly. Um, the, there's definitely the educational aspect. I'm genuinely I mean, really, truly, genuinely interested in other people's businesses and mm -hmm. what they're doing and what the economy is like. There's so many things... You know, I, I, I tell other voice actors, you're not, you are a voice actor, but that's the service you provide. You're a business owner first. And yep. that is really the framework that you have to look at everything you're doing in. And it will ground you so much more uh, as a voice actor to, to view your day-to-day -day tasks, the systems that you have in place or should have in place yep. uh, <laughs> will carry you through this business of voice acting. So if you can learn from another business owner, something that you didn't know before or have a perspective on, um, I'll use the example of the lawyer that I was talking to last night. It, you know, I, I expressed express to her what's happening in the voiceover industry, but some of the approaches that we're taking, we just have to be really better at what we do. And she just loved hearing that, you know, yeah. that, that excellence is something that we can all be reaching for uh, in no matter what business that we're in. Yep. Um, and then definitely the relationships, just as you laid out there, uh, are really, really valuable. And you just can't see, no one has a crystal ball. You don't know what the future will hold. But I think relationships are something that you can really count on. One of the things that I always say is you don't know who you know, who they know. And so you might connect with somebody at one of these events and they're not a producer or somebody who would traditionally hire voiceover. But what if they, you know, what if their brother-in-law is or their uncle is or like you never know. And so there's value in in every connection and and, you know, just expanding that network even further. Well, this is going to sound terrible. I've even networked at funerals. <laughs> Hey, that's terrible. You never know who's there. You I never know. know who's there. Well, and like, it's not like we just want to stand around and be talking about, you know, dead people. Like it's yeah. funerals are awkward enough to begin with. So you've got to lighten the mood a little bit. That's sometimes. right. Yeah. Yep. That's right. <laughs> All right, Haley. Well, this has been fantastic. And I'm so grateful he, to you for, for sharing this because I do think that it is an underrated 
and overlooked form of marketing. Yes. Uh, and I particularly agree with your statement earlier about, you know, we're missing opportunities that exist right in our own backyard. And this is a really easy way to get out there and get them. So thank you so much for sharing that. I know you think that you're not an expert on the subject, but I feel like I just sat through a, you know, nearly 60 minute coaching session on how to do in-person networking better. Aww. So uh, I, th I think awesome. you know more than you, than you realize. And, and you shared a lot of good stuff with us today. So thank you so much for that. Thanks for the invitation, Mark. It was really nice being here today talking with you.